Down in Australia, food and toys that I grew up with are being discontinued because some groups suddenly find the names of these products racist. We're talking about things like lollies and cheese. F***ing cheeses. So I headed back to my hometown to sort these people out. Now, I haven't seen these products in years, but I don't remember them being so bad. For instance, my favourite candy, Red Skin. Ah, oh, shit. But who doesn't love Chico babies? And then, my favourite cheese. Kid. Oh, what are you doing, Australia? So maybe these products didn't age quite as well as I remember, but one couple isn't going down without a fight. Nana loves her teddies, all 15,000 of them. Dave and Jan Robertson own Nana's Teddies and Toys, located just two hours outside of Sydney. And these anti-PC crusaders are defending one very traditional Australian item. F**k. What is this? They're gollywogs. Australia. Meet the gollywog. Generations of Australians, including me, have grown up with these black-faced ragdolls. Americans don't know what these are, but what are gollywogs? A gollywog is basically a dark-skinned or black uh, ragdoll. Why do you think there's been a push to ban the gollywogs? There's a few people in the world that are against it, and we're not sure whether they actually don't like the doll because it's a black doll or because of the name. One of the few people who doesn't like this doll is activist, author and filmmaker Dr Stephen Hagen. He's fought for the rights of Aboriginal people for years. Well, you've got to understand the origin of the doll. OK, here it goes. <gasps> the Gollywog first appeared in the 1895 children's books The Adventures of the Two Dutch Dolls by Florence Kate Upton. Not to be confused with this Kate Upton. <laughs> Based on the tradition of the blackface minstrel, the enormous success of Upton's book and its many sequels only increased the popularity of the gollywog around the world. So much so that the British jam manufacturer Robertson's used it as official mascot from 1910 till 1988. Then boycotts eventually led to its banishment. Oddly enough, the first group to officially ban the gollywog, labelling it as quote, an inappropriate toy for young children, were the Nazis in 1934. In fact, the Nazis were so offended, they also banned actual black people. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why people don't want to be told what they can or can't like? Why should we lose something that people love? Yeah, but a lot of people hate it as well. They have a right to be offended if that's their choice. The same as we have a right not to be. Don't you think this one's a bit Aunt Jemimery? She's still got a smile on her face. Still got a smile on her face. <laughs> it is a little black minstrelly though, isn't it? A little bit. Mm, a lot of bit. <laughs> Do you feel if we lose the gollywog, we'd lose some heritage or history or something like that? It's traditional. So why change it? The old, it's traditional, so why change it argument. Whether it's Confederate flag, Black Pete, and almost everything in the Bible, people love keeping things exactly as they are, no matter what. I decided to move on to other controversial products. So the Gollywog biscuit was banned. Do you think that should have happened, or do you think we should have kept the biscuit? Should have kept the biscuit. Should have kept the biscuit. There was nothing wrong with it. It was a nice hour root biscuit. biscuit. They're gone. When was the last time you ate coon cheese? Oh, when I was a teenager. What if it's in slices? I don't have it because I shit myself and I'm lactose intolerant, but we all have our crosses to bear. <laughs> I spoke to an Aboriginal man who is trying to get rid of coon cheese. But He's why change the name? It's been like that for years. Yes, it has been that way for years, but maybe it's time to audition some new names. What should we rename coon cheese? Why do you call it Dairy Farmer's Cheese? Maybe something that throws back on them, we'll call it Bigots. I think that'd be a good, that'd be a good name for it. <laughs> then no one will eat it then. Well-spoken cheese. Is that a better name? I can't believe it's not racist cheese. Guess which cheese is coming to dinner? Well, there's one. There's one, that's not bad. <laughs> are things just too PC these days? Yes. What are we in danger of happening? I think we're in danger of having our children grow up without having a, as much free thought and having their opinions biased and not so much in a good way. My argument has always been with racist things is that if it was a norm for your family to tell racist jokes, you're going to teach your kids it's okay to make racist jokes. Mm. So when you want to say, oh, is coon cheese offensive? No, it wasn't offensive to grandfather. Wasn't offensive to Auntie Mary. We didn't think of it that way. Exactly. The populace don't believe these food items are offensive because it's not offensive to them. But if I eat red skins and I eat gollywog biscuits, does that make me a racist? Well, well, in a way it does. If you're educated enough to know that these things offend people of colour, you shouldn't eat them. So if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. It was clear that Dave and Jan found no offence to these products, so I decided to ask about certain words. Does the N-word offend you? What, 
Yeah. It doesn't offend me because I don't have any real connection with it. It's not a term I would use. Would we be all right with a product called N-Word Fried Chicken? Had it came out onto the market in Australia as N N Chicken, probably be accepting of it. It's like the shoe polish. Yeah, the, there was the a what? shoe polish the called... The shoe polish used to be called... Shoe polish. polish. Yeah, it was all... Yeah, it was all... It was polish. all... Australia's doing wonderful. <laughs> but don't get too finger pointy, America. You've got your own products with racist undertones. Hit the music. Aunt Jemima was first introduced in 1889. The character follows the common mammy archetype of the day. The expression aunt is a pejorative term for a servile black woman. Which brings us to Uncle Ben. Same awful roots. Not those kind of roots. I'm running out of air here. Cream of wheat. Also super f***ed up. Just look at some of these pictures. Like how the f*** are companies still using these characters in their products in 2019? <gasps> And with that, I only had one more thing to ask. What would you say to a black person who is offended by these dolls? That you're right. Yeah, look, I, I, I would actually apologise that the doll was offensive to them. Maybe he's finally starting to get it. But there is other products in our store that obviously don't offend them. Focus on that. <laughs> right.